a little spiel now, uh, Ernie C, because I want people to start joining joining us. I did tease it a bit, but okay. if, if you can believe it or not, I forget the number of the episode that you were on, uh, Ernie mm-hmm. C, with it was uh, with uh, Catherine Turman, but we're up to 182, and I, I don't know if we were up to 100 by the time last time we spoke. Because oh, very good. the last time we spoke, I think it was uh, shortly after your last album came out. So I, I couldn't believe. It. I feel like it's only almost been like two years, three years since we last spoke. Is Carnivore is out? Yeah, just about that long. Yeah, we're, try, we're trying to do records every few years now because the band's been off and on, taking long hiatuses and things like that. So right now we're enjoying it, and the records are doing well. So we're trying to do them every few years if we can. You've been really consistent. Um, I know it's the, maybe it's the elephant in the room doing it with a, uh, having this conversation on a Guns N' Roses podcast, but that's kind of our, the bane of our existence is, is, is consistency. But your fans, I feel like you guys are so good to your fans. They know what to expect. What you call a hiatus is kind of just like a little, a little break. So what, uh, I guess, when did you start writing Carnivore? You know, what, yeah, go ahead. Well, we started writing Carnivore right after we started writing, uh, you know, the last record. So it's like we just been writing. I mean, you know, and then we send stuff to Will Putney. You know, Will, back, we're in Los Angeles, the band. Ice is in New York. So we send stuff to Will Putney. He's worked on these last three records. And um, we've just been writing. And, you know, right, you know, five months ago, we, we decided to write this record. So, you know, we're just trying to be consistent. The, the, the band can... can come up with a lot of music we have a lot of writers in the band so you know we're just trying to be consistent for the past you know nine ten years the last ten years i believe i think i don't even i want to say consistent with is the word but with a a plus next to it because it's before i even listened to it and i i i enjoyed the whole thing uh is all the reviews i would read about this new record carnivore and it's it's if everyone says it, it's this it's it's old. It's you could tell it's body count, but it sounds fresh. Like I don't know. Like how do you do that? How do you sound? How do you stay true to your sound? But it doesn't sound dated at all. It sounds like a twenty twenty metal record. We just do what we do. You know, we we just play the notes that we play. We have Will there. Who, you know, his his band uh, Fit for an Autopsy is a really hot band, and you know we listen to what's going on. We, you know, we we have. Uh, Riley on it from Power Trip. We listen to the bands that are current, so I, I guess that's why we, we're not stuck, you know, listening to our old records or listening to bands from the '80s trying to make that sound into the, to the, today. We, we listen to what's going on and kind of kind of reflects it. Before we go deeper, I guess into the record. I mean, we got to just you know kind of just chit chat at the beginning. Are you? How are you? How are you doing? Because, you know, I, I mentioned I'm in quarantine. You know, I'm broadcasting live from my apartment in Queens. I'm normally in Tribeca at the iHeart Studios, but it's been, I don't know, 13. It's almost been a couple weeks. Uh, how are you doing? How are you, how's your family? How are you feeling? Everything uh, okay by you? Everything's pretty cool. You know, I always say I'm an only child, so being by myself isn't a, a new thing. You know, I can isolate. I've isolated all my life hmm. as a child, you know. So, um the, the, the thing about it is, I, I, right now I'm getting a lot of time to play guitar, which isn't bad, you know, it's not a bad thing. That's your life. It's time to play some guitar, because, you know, when you get busy and start touring, you really don't practice, you know. Like, when you learn how to play guitar, you, you spend a lot of time practicing. You sit uh, down for hours on end learning how to play. So I'm getting to do that again, which is, right now it's kind of not that bad, you know what I mean? Okay. But uh, six weeks from now we'll have to still, but right now... I, 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 I'm accepting what's going on, and you know maybe the earth needs to clean itself up. <laughs> you know I'm out here in LA. I'm out here in LA. The, the air is like the worst air in the city, in the in the country. But right now the air is clean and fresh. Didn't they say that about uh, China? How it was like the worst air pollution, and when they did shut down, it just it went like down by fifty percent. So, yeah, exactly. And it, 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 too, the water, you know, the, the, the water there was terrible and you know, all the, you know, the canals and everything, everything's cleaning up. So the earth is healing itself, you know, at our expense, but it, it's cleaning itself. <laughs> I know. I mean, obviously, it's a terrible thing that's going on. But if there are silver linings that come out of this to teach us how to reevaluate and, and prioritize 
the important things, you know, not the, yeah. you know, for people who are complaining, oh, I can't go out and do my nails. You know, even me, I can't right. go out and do, you know, my podcast, but I can still make it work. And, but that leads yeah. me to yeah. you. Is it bumming you out that you're, because you, you were supposed to be in New York soon. You were, you're supposed to be gigging and doing we shows. Yeah, yeah, we were supposed to be there. We were supposed to be uh, Jimmy Fallon. And, uh, oh, wow. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I mean, we're going to do it. We're going to be on there with, with, with uh, Amy Lee from Evanescence. She was going to sing with us, but we're, we're going to do it. You know, when this is over, we'll do it. We'll make up the show we we're going to do. The other shows we have planned are later on in the year anyway. They'll get in, in July, so okay. they'll get rescheduled or and they're in Europe. So we'll see what happens. you got to play everything by ear right now. But the, the, the thing about this is it's going to pass. And, and we're going to make up all the shows. It's not like we, people that plan on see us, seeing us won't see us. They'll just won't see us, you know, we'll have to wait two months or three months, whatever it's going to take. But it's going to happen. Okay, that's, cool. That's where I'm at. That's where, that's where I'm at right now, you know? You just need a little patience, as someone uh, once said. Exactly. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a good friend of ours, yeah, he, he says that, you know. <laughs> he, can whistle, he can whistle it, too. So, I know. <laughs> not, uh, and, have you uh, ever played Fallon before? Forgive me for not knowing. Yeah, we were, we were the first a metal band to ever play Late Night on there. I did not know that. Metallica came later. We were the first metal band to actually play on there. With that thought, you know, obviously for me doing this uh, this podcast over the last three years has really ex- uh, expanded my fandom to all these other bands and artists that surround GNR, Body Count being one. And I kind of kick myself for not finding, you know, or really going deep into the catalog earlier when I was in high school. I found, I feel like I found you late. Do you feel that as as a as a band, maybe that you're, I don't know, people are just finding you that maybe you're underappreciated, that you're not always in the conversation when people talk. I, 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 I don't get involved with that. You know, it, it, I, I'm in the conversation. You know, of late we've been, you know, in the conversation, but I, I, I don't get involved. Here we got a Grammy nomination a few years back. Yep. And I said, it only, it only took 27 years, you know? So <laughs> I, I, I can't complain, you know? Some people would go their whole life without getting a Grammy nomination. So, you know, I, I, it, 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 it's cool just to, to still be around after 30 plus years of playing. So, Yeah, that's the right attitude to have. Uh, let me ask, is, since you mentioned uh, the song that you're going to do on, on Fallon, that's When I'm Gone with Amy Lee. Mm-hmm. How did that collaboration come about? How did Amy Lee, you know, join Body Count? You know, <laughs> Body Count. right for, for a song. You know, it, it's like music has. I don't even know how it happened. My check knew someone that knew her. We needed someone to sing it. She was more than happy to do it. So you know, it just worked. I mean, it just came about. I mean, it, it's no match. There was no record company saying, "Okay, you got to get her and put her on, write a song." You have to. It, it didn't happen like that. It just happened that we needed someone and she was the right voice at the right time, you know? Awesome. The right person, also. Okay. How did that, the recording process with her go? Did she go in separately or you recorded it together? How did that go? No, it was, it was all, you know, all over the place. So I was in L.A. while they were doing it in New York. I, the record was done and she came on after Ice was done with his part. So okay. We had... That was, a, that was a producer thing. That was more Will Putney than anyone else. Okay, okay. Uh, we got a question coming in. This is from uh, Sorab. Uh, he wants to know, like, how do you feel if you can rank it, Carnivore, in the Body Count discography? Mm-hmm. Can you rank it? Where do you, where do you think it falls? I, you know, it, 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 you know, everyone says this a million times. You have a, you, how do you like one kid better than the other? <laughs> right. Uh, it's, 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 it's a garbage question. It is. We've heard that a million times. But it's the right record for now, you know? It's the right record for the band to be doing now. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's one of my favorites. I mean, the last three records, I like those a whole lot. I like the first record, of course, because that established us who we, who we are. But, you know, it's like, it's it's in the conversation. It's like, it's it's really good. The test of time will, will let us know how, how, you know, how it ranks. It's, again, I mentioned the reviews, and it's so well received by, you know, I guess in, in today's day and age, it's so easy, especially if you just want somebody somebody to click on your headline to be negative. But it's it's very hard to find anything negative said about. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I read the review. Excuse me, I read the review, and they, they 
most of them positive. But then there's this one dude that says, you guys need to hang it up, you two old. But he's the one that sticks out in my head. <laughs> the, the haters always break through. They have a way to try to get under your skin, you know? What's, um? I mean, I think for you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it, just the way you you are, and for those who haven't listened to Ernie's conversation with me the first time he was on, he talked talked about how he, how he grew up and his his uh you know child life and, and and how he became the person he is. Is it easy for you to ignore haters? Is it is it does it you know you may remember it, but you kind of do you laugh it off like you are, or does it really kind of bother you? I, I, I laugh guess? it off. I laugh it off. I laugh it off. But you know, I used to always say people hate up. They never they never hate down. So if they're hating you, they're coming from below you to hate you, to say something up to you, to, you know, to make you, bring you down. You know what I mean? People above you aren't hating on you. You know what I mean? It's people below you. So that's the attitude you have to keep with haters. You know, it's, it's awesome. And I know you're, I mean, you're pretty great on, on Facebook you're, and, and Instagram. You're always, you know, posting uh, just classic pictures, classic uh, performances with a body count. Uh, you just you know, noodling on your guitar. But I do got to say, because I want to stay just uh, on the, the topic of haters just for the moment, because Ice T's uh, Twitter is the best. And I'm trying to find, uh, he tweeted the other day specifically about haters or someone, how uh, he was saying, you got to listen to Body Count. And right. that I'm just scrolling through Twitter right now. Again, this is in real time. We have a, we have a song on uh there's a new record called The Hate is Real. It's about haters, you know what I mean? The, you know, The Hate is Real. You know, Talk Shit, Get Shot was about haters, you know what I mean? Every, you know, it's a, it's a part of life. When the internet came out, it gave people a, that were normally not, like normally people don't run into ICE to say hey to him. But he's on Twitter and, you know, it's the, he's on Twitter all the time. And he answers back to people. Yes, he does. And people don't get, and people don't get a chance to go to him and say, say to him, you know what? You suck. So now with, with social media, they get a chance to do that, and he responds to them, and he does he does a great job of doing that. You this know? he knows how to put people in their place. You know? Oh, it's, uh, I, I get a kick out of it. I love it. He's one of my favorite followers, and I found it. But the the person who wrote the comment deleted it. But he was basically okay. the, he was just promoting body count, of course, listening to the you know getting the new record Carnivore. Uh, and yeah. the person's like, how dare you talk about body count during these trying times? You know, obviously. <laughs> and Ice-T's response was, it's the name of my group, dumb fuck. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just seeing oh, Ice-T respond like that, it just melts my heart. He was way, he was way off, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I mean, right now, actually, you need entertainment and, and body count. I mean, there's no sports, you know, no. there's nothing. You know, music, music is the group. Music and movies are the only things you can do and watch television. So, you know, you can't go to a, a basketball game. You, nope. can't, you know, that's, that's the only thing you can do now to keep some kind of normalcy or just to keep a, a, a good attitude. You know, let me ask you, because, you know, it's it, I'm, I know it's not like I came up with this idea and then bands are doing it now, including uh, this Sunday, iHeart is actually putting on some big concert, I think from Elton John's living room. Or something like that, like Billie Eilish and Dave Grohl, and it's all you know, all these crazy things. So, but on a lower level, I guess I don't want to call it that. More simplistic level. Uh, last night, I was in my apartment with my girlfriend, and Dave Matthews is doing an hour on Twitter. So I just saw it on the news. So is that something that maybe you know you guys might do body cam? Maybe you know while we're in this, and maybe you guys are itching on the road, maybe doing some. Something on the web, like a web performance, anything like that in the future? I, I don't know. Ice is in New York. We're out here. My, my bass player just got pins taken out of his leg Ooh. from when he jumped off the stage in Chicago. So, uh -huh. so yeah, he, okay. did, he, did a stage, he did a stage dive, which was turned into, you know, a stage hit, you know? So, you know, so we, we might need this time just to kind of, you know, take some time to heal ourselves. So. Okay. Okay, that that's cool. Uh, actually, So Rab sent in a follow up question before um, just now. Uh, it says Body Count uh, has taken a big a turn musically after the Murder for Hire record. What happened within the band that got uh, so got you so much better with the manslaughter uh, until now? Oh, I, I quit drinking. <laughs> 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 I, I 
starts playing the right notes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Sobriety. I always, I always, do, always do that with a sense of humor. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it, it's, the, it's the best way to do it. You know, I, I it took eight years off. You know, I, I was drinking. I quit drinking and all that kind of stuff. And, and I feel better. Every, you know, I feel better. And, you know, if you feel better, you play better. If you play better, you make better records. If you mm. make better records, you get a better, your fans come back. You know, they understand what you're doing. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, can you tell us about the collaboration with Jamie Josta on the song Another Level on the new record? Oh, he's been our, he's been our friend for years. You know what I mean? So, it, 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 one more time, it's not that complicated. He was, he wanted to do a song. He brought the song. And we played the song and he did his part. So, so it, it, it's just that simple. You know, sometimes bands like to make it more complicated, you know, than it is. It, it was just that simple. He's been a friend, you know, and, and he ends up on the record. So. Is there anyone that you tried to reach out to, perhaps, on the record that, that maybe through a scheduling that didn't work out? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because everybody, I mean, generally, when people, I wanted to get Perry Farrell, you know, on this record, okay. but I didn't get, get him try to get him until after the record, you know. And he was like, oh, why did you tell me? I'm like, well, <laughs> you, know, it, 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 you know, it's that kind of thing. So, no, okay. no one, no, really. Well, I mean, maybe for the next one, you get Perry Farrell, yeah. no? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, that, and I'll, I'll, next time, because we don't put that much thought into getting other people. Our, uh, our thing is like, let's do a record ourselves instead of trying to get someone else. That's what we did the last record, how we got Dave Mustang, and we, you know, we got uh, Max, and we got uh, Randy. We, we did the record first, then they came in later. So on the next record, we'll, we'll, we'll try it like that. But right now, we're, we're good. Oh, very, that's that's right on. I, I like that you kind of make your first, your blueprint, and whoever can add spices to it, you know, whether it's right. Namely or someone else comes in, and yeah, you know, uh, yeah. We don't want we don't want it too contrived. We don't want to be like, oh, we got to do this song with so and so. Then it turns into like it, it just get it could get messy. You know what I mean? It's best to have what you're doing first, and then let someone fit into what what the groove we have instead of trying to create something. It, it, it's simpler for us that way. Is there um... You know, other than just making a badass metal record, is there anything that you wanted to put into Carnivore that you want to make sure the fans take out of it? Like any sort of, you know, of course, Ed, there's great lyrics, you know, but is there an overall, I guess, if you had to pick a theme or a message for people to, to take away or just enjoyment, just enjoying, you know, yeah. rocking out? <laughs> just enjoy rocking out, you know, and, you know, rock out is something that we enjoy doing. So that, that, that's the thing we want to take the people take from we enjoy doing it and i hope you enjoy it you know so that that's all that's all we're out here doing and you're able to kind of compartmentalize like everything that's going on now in the world i mean this is a, i'm using a for an already overused phrase these are unprecedented times do you find right. it hard to to energize yourself especially to play at the speed and the aggression that you play with do you find it hard to to pick yourself up or is it just you are who you are and there's no other way to play we, we, we are who we are and, and and that's the way it is you know i used to I, we play really fast but you know i used to, that's what I, I used to practice on playing fast you know uh even my you know i'm over i'm over 60 and even when i talk i'm still hyper i'm still hmm. have energy we haven't lost the energy and the drive of doing it yet you know so playing, playing the speed metal I, I love the word speed metal. I like saying the word speed metal. You know what I mean? When it, when it first started, when we got a category, when we first started, we weren't a speed metal band. We were just a, a, a rock band, punk band. Then we started getting the category of speed metal. And when I say what I do, I always say speed metal now. Not just heavy metal. We play speed metal. Speed metal. Like <laughs> okay. I like that. I like that. It's not cool. it's not, it's not cooler than heavy metal. You know, what I mean? to me, <laughs> you're right. Because heavy like, metal, you, yeah, heavy metal can mean you know you don't sound like Black Sabbath. You know, you right. exactly. So or even even guns, guns is heavy metal to me. You know what I mean? They're a heavy metal band. You know. Speaking of, and I don't know, I mean, how you you classify? I think Motorhead is in its league of uh, a league of their own. How did the your your cover your badass cover on this album, uh, Ace of Spades? How did you pick that song? What, what how who picked that song? Uh, how did well, that end up making well, the record? A, a few things. Let's go back. You know, 
back, I see did a movie with Lemmy called uh, Airheads way back in the day. I don't know if you remember. Uh, that that's one of my favorite movies of all time. You know, that, I, that's when we, we know Lemmy from way back then. So that's, the 90s. Where I mean, was Ice in that movie? I, I'm, 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 I feel like I know. I thought I knew that movie back in front. Where's Ice in that movie? I, I, I did Born to Raise Hell with Hickam. Oh, uh, with oh okay. Yeah, I love that yeah, song. That's, that's where you know him from, him from. And so, you know, when I used to drink, I used to hang around the, in the morning with uh, with Lemmy and drink with Lemmy. You know, and that's a true rock and roll drink at the, the Rainbow at <laughs> 11 o'clock in the morning. It's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, no, 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 it's eleven a.m. An even better song. Yeah, you don't have to go. You don't have to go five because you don't have a job to get off at five to go somewhere and drink a happy hour. Happy hour starts early. That's funny, right? That's our guy, first of all, and and. We were going to play, um, you know, in our set, we open up with uh, a Slayer song, right? Yeah. So uh, we opened up with Raining Blood. So we, we, last um, last year, we were going to play a show in um, a big European festival, and Slayer was on the show. So we said, let's open up with something else. They said, what do we know? We Oh, let's, let's play uh, a Motorhead song. So we decided on that song because it was easy to play. Because we rehearsed the song backstage before we went out to play. <laughs> we, <laughs> wow. So, uh, so we, we learned the song backstage. We per- went through it a few times. And we went on stage and played it. I opened up with it. And so we, we, we said to ourselves, we're going to blow it. We might as well just blow it at the beginning. You know? <laughs> go, go through the set that we know. You know, get it over. Don't try to get nervous about playing a song later on in the set that you don't know. Right on. Open up with it. We opened up with it. Everybody knew the lyrics. Sure. The audience knew the lyrics. 60,000 people were singing, so it made it really easy to mm. play. <laughs> so we're like, let's add this on the record. And we recorded it. Oh, that, that, that's so cool. As someone, you know, you're talking about going to the Rainbow, Rainbow with Lemmy and how long you've, you've known him. You know, it's so hard to believe that he's gone, of course. And, and this is coming from somebody who I, I've never met the man. I, it's, I never had the pleasure. Uh-huh. How did it, it feel cool. for you? I, I guess it was it was it fun to record? Did you feel kind of solemn, wishing that uh, he was here? You know, it's like well, you, of course you wish he was here, but you, you miss yeah. him. That, that's a, a way to give respect. You know what I mean? We, we, we try to do the song as close to the way he played it, and, and, and you know, like you know, I've lost some members of my band also, but when I play the song, it gives me a good memory of them. Okay. You know what I mean? So, so that's the same kind of feeling I get when I play, you know, when I, but we only played a few times on stage, but, but every t- when I play it, it's a lot of fun. You know, the thing about the rock and roll is when you play so- a song like that, that you know, and, and, and you know, it, it, it's all about, I have a good time. I'm having fun doing it. Well, that's a, that's a great answer. Sorry for the truck passing by. <laughs> so, oh, as okay. a, no I mean, there's a few cars, uh, where, so you're in LA right now. You're just at home. Just yeah, ch- just, I'm just hanging out. Yeah, just yeah. Hanging out. Same here, but no, that's the. You know, like, you know, like, I, like, like um, you were talking about being people being upset about things. You know, usually in the morning I get up and go to the gym in the morning. And today I went out jogging. You know, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go jogging. Today. I'm not a jogger. I'm not an outside exercise. I like the safety of the gym. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm in this book. There's a book about rock and rollers. I mean, Duff is in it, and Dave Navarro is in it, about rock and rollers that uh, doing healthy things in their life. I forgot the name. Oh, it's called The Rock and Roll Solution. Okay. Something like that. And, and I talk about people that run here in L.A. all in the canyons and things like that. They love running in the mountains. I'm like, there's snakes out there. There's, there's all kinds of... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there are going to be no animals that are going to, you know, bite yeah, you. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what's the deal? Anyway, so that's what, that's what I miss. You know, that's, that's the only thing I miss right now is just not being able to go to the gym. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, I mean, you still have you have a great attitude about everything. I loved your answer about you know playing songs, not just Lemmy's song, but for people that you've lost in your life and the positive experience that comes out of playing that song. And just not now, I mean, you seem to have just a, a great attitude because I know, you know, you're you're a buff dude. You know, I saw your your Facebook post today. You, you out jogging, and I'm I'm glad that you're you know you're still keeping staying in shape. It's it's very it's hard. You know, it's it's hard for you know for people who are not who are so active just to be hunkered down. So is there anything? Is there anything now you're you're doing like this to stay busy? Are you binge watching anything, or is it just playing guitar and, oh, and jogging? Watching some a, a box of hostess uh, cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been eating bacon rinds. I've been eating a whole bunch of bad stuff. I said I'm gonna come out of here. Maybe I'm gonna be on my 600 pound life. <laughs> come out of here. <laughs> that's the next thing. That's the next podcast I'm gonna be on. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but it's, it's like it, it's it's you accept it for what it is. I, I, I've been watching some movies. I've been watching you know just I got Hulu. I got everything. You know. And, I, I, it, it, uh, the thing about being a musician is you have time. You can veg out on the guitar for three or four hours. You know, that's spend some time right there. And, and then um, it's good. I've, I've been watching YouTube, learning guitar riffs. So, I mean, when I, when I was learning how to play, you had to learn from people or learn from Mel Bay book number one and all that kind of stuff. Now, now you can go on YouTube and you can play some stuff like, wow, how did he do that? That's pretty neat, actually. I don't know how it's going to fit into a song, but <laughs> it's really neat. <laughs> You'll find a way. Really You'll find a way. It's really neat. People are doing some really, you know, it's not musical. Sometimes uh, a lot of people are doing things that aren't musical, but they're technical. So okay. I'm learning some of that stuff. I'm okay. learning some of that stuff right now, you know? Everyone can play like Slash with a lot of feel, you know? Right. Yeah. No, you can be technically proficient, but it's another thing to be, you know, to to make right. someone feel right. something when you're playing it. Totally. Right. Because, you know, uh, we said uh, Guns N' Roses, you know, your podcast has a lot of Guns N' Roses. But every time I like, hear like Slash play, every, you can play notes that are all in good places, you know what I mean? And good feeling to the notes. They, they feel good notes, you know what I mean? They're not no wasted notes. No, no, every note has a emotion attached to it that he grew up with. So some people just be like, it, it goes so fast, like, what was that? What did you say right there? You know? <laughs> Has it come across, whether it be, you know, and we've established how you've gotten some great people on the, the body count records, you already make a great record and somebody else comes in. Uh, has it, what, the, I, don't, I guess you haven't really said like there's so many people that you're, you've thought about too far ahead, it just comes up organically. But how about you? Were you ever asked to be on a record uh, that we may not know about to be on, you know, uh, like an established artist or established act that wanted you know, the Ernie C. Uh, stamp on it. Was anyone a part of that? I, I, I think some, no, not really. Uh, I don't, I'm not out a whole lot. You know, there's a certain clique of musicians that are out and about and all that kind of stuff. I'm not out and about a whole lot. You know, like you get, you know, like the Satchianis and, you know, your, uh, you know, guitar player, guitar players, they're out a whole lot. I'm not really out a whole lot. People associate me with this band and I'm, I'm cool with that. Okay, because I, I did get a question on Instagram. This is from uh, Mr. Anderson from San Antonio. Uh, and, and, and tell me, because I didn't know about this. He says, oh, according to... Just, what's that? Wait, let me hear this one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he, said, he, he said, according to, uh, to Rip Magazine, he filled in for Slash during the 1995 rehearsals. Is that true? Really? No. Okay. No, I, I, no. I, I saw that myself. I was just like... I, where did that from? I mean, I, I've been to rehearsals, you know, Duff's been my friend forever. I'm, I didn't never feel him. I, I, we and Duff played together. We, we were going to start a record company together. We, you know, uh, you know, but, you know, that, that, I don't know anything about that. Okay. Well, it would have been great, though. It would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those good rumors to have. It's a good rumor yeah, to have I, about you. I, I, I like it. That's fine. I like it. Use it myself. I need to find this article. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just mentioned, was, was that an old idea about you and Duff starting a label? Or is that something that you guys, a wish list that thing? 90, that was some 90s drunk stuff, you oh, know? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> we're, both, we're both done with that idea. <laughs> okay. Have you, because um, I know you guys have played together, but is that something that, because what's cool is 
with Ozzy's new record, we slash and duff on it, and we see in today's uh-huh. a- a day and age how you can record parts and not even, of course, be in in, in there. Have you? Um, I guess even. I guess you're really not thinking about, you know, maybe I'm answering my own question. Are you even thinking about the next record and maybe getting a Duff and getting a Slash since you've been friends with them for so long to be a part of? You know, that, you know that's something that uh, I talked to Ice about, and I, I really have to do that. You know, I have to be on a recording with them, you know, before we're all done with this whole get down. So that, that that's really, uh, I'm going to make it a point on the next record to really try to, to get Duff, you know, at least Duff on the record so I could be on the record with my, my friend, you know, that'd be, that'd be really nice. No, no. I'll, 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 I'll reach out to him and, you know, and, and say that, you know. Well, that's awesome. He'll, he'll, hear, this, he'll hear this somewhere along the way. And I, I, then he'll just say, oh, I knew this was coming. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a, it's about time. And then that's uh that makes me excited. And it's really nice because you've been you've been very kind to share. So- oh no, it's still recording. Now it's uh it's just all of a sudden for us for whatever reason. Uh, it's all good. Yeah, but because the only way like, anyone was able to, to tell is when I just kind of. Uh, didn't say anything for a few seconds on the live. Uh, anyway, but so with that, because uh, you've been kind enough to share some photos of, you know, you and, and, and Slash, excuse me, Duff and your, your children. Like he's known your daughter since she was she was eight and now she's my yeah. age. She's 36. Yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah she's your age right now. Yeah, they've been, they've been knowing each other a long time. <laughs> I, I always said, you know, when... Yeah, he, he loves. She loves him to death. You know, she's hmm. known him all his life. Her life. You know. Do you guys um like how did that come about? Maybe for you, and if it's too personal, you don't need to share. Like when you're at home, you know, obviously, you know, I'm my, I'm talking to my brothers, my mom. You know, I'm letting them know I'm working from home. You know, how how do you go about? It? Do you call someone who's a close family friend like Duff, or do you guys know that you're both okay? Like how? I text, I email and text them. You know, I don't really talk a whole lot on the phone. I e- I email and text them. Okay. You know, make sure make sure he's okay. As a matter of fact, when I get off, I'm going to say I talked about you today. But you know, <laughs> I'm just going to relay this on to him. You know. Right on. But that's the way I do it. You know. And I, you know, I have a you know I, uh, I I quit drinking years ago, so I have like 400 people on my phone that uh, are members of uh, a secret society of non drinkers. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, you're supposed to do, you're supposed to do the right thing sometimes. I mean, you do. It seems like you do. The, the, well, at this point in your life, you're doing the right thing all the time, yeah. and and you yeah. know, you, I it's it's I don't know how. Um, you know what what your turning point. I mean, maybe we discussed the last time your turning point, but for me, I think we did. Maybe we did because I think it's been about uh, four years. I think it's coming up later this year, five years for me without having a drink and. And you're right. You got to check on those people. You know, it's uh. Check on people. You know, it's good, especially right now. You know, some people, are, you know, and, and people aren't used to being isolated. You know, the, the number one thing right. people have trouble with about, with drinking is isolation. You know, some 100%. people aren't used to being by themselves. You know, so you got to check on people, make sure they're okay. You're absolutely right. I, I, that's that's something that's a byproduct. I don't think people talk about it enough. I think about. Yeah, okay. It's funny. I say to my because my girlfriend hates being at home. She's always out. And she's a dance teacher, uh-huh. so she's. Okay. Oh. But uh, I, I say to her, I'm so lucky. I consider myself lucky to be stuck here. Not to sound like a cheese ball, to be with her, or to be, you know, because if I was when I was an alcoholic and this stuff happened, I don't know if I would have came out of it. I mean, it's awful. So yeah, it's, you got you got to be so bad. careful. Yeah. Right now you can't you can't go to bars and drink, so you're no. gonna drink by yourself. Which is even worse, right? You know what I mean? there's, there's nobody at the bar that says, "You know what? I think you've had enough." I know. No scary stuff. Yeah. Scary stuff. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you know you're you're doing well. Obviously, you know no one knows when this uh, this crisis is going to end. But uh, knowing that you guys have new music for us to listen to uh, right now, and just to, that's going to keep us, you know, it's going to keep our, our our thirst quenched, our blood thirst, I guess, to keep along with the carnivore theme. Uh, until you guys hit the road again, and I can't wait for Fallon, 
uh, for everything that, that's going to come in the future. And obviously, when you do come to New York and we're allowed to, you know, be socially interactive and not socially distant, I would love to have you in studio. Cool. Let me ask you one quick question. Sure. How's Doug Goldstein? How's Doug Goldstein doing? Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention. We talked about that off the air. So I appreciate um, all the people who got involved and like what I'm doing now with this Facebook Live kind of thing. So I spoke to Doug uh, yesterday. Huh? And I uh -huh. said I was speaking with you tomorrow, and he's like, "Give Ernie my love." He's like, "He's one of the best yeah. people ever." Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. I, I love Doug. You know, Doug's a good man. He's a really good man. I, I forget. Did you? Did we uh, talk about perhaps your fondest memory of being on tour with with GNR for those uh, those shows? Do you have a, oh, a special fond memory? Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's a bunch of them, but I just remember they had more broken broke equipment than we had equipment. Okay. <laughs> so they had a whole bunch of equipment. It was, it, it was, it was a good time. It, it was like welcome to the heavy metal. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, bands don't even tour like that today. You know what I mean? It was access of everything. So it, it was a good time. And Doug was always, you know, on top of stuff. You know? Yeah. No. And I think he moved to Hawaii or something like that. And kind of, you know, I think he's back out here helping his son's band. I want to go see them when we get through this, you know? Yeah, I think he's he's now in, he was in Hawaii. He's in Memphis. Even though he, he touts his uh, his son's band, but he's like his son's band. His son refuses any of his help. He doesn't want to be known as the uh, the Guns N' Roses guy and get his help. <laughs> well, yeah. That's, he should, well, I'll talk to him. He might Guns N' Roses friend from Body Count's help. So. Fair enough. Uh, actually, one last question I just got in. This is from... <laughs> This is from uh, Dirk from uh, from Germany. Uh, he asks. Okay. Oh, Dirk, uh, Dirk in Germany. How is it? Wonder how it's doing over there. Okay. Yeah, I hope. I mean, it's it's hurting everybody. Um, yeah, exactly. Can Ernie please tell some more stories about his work with Black Sabbath? <laughs> I, uh, you know, what story is there to tell? I think we we should we talked about it on the last podcast we did, right? We, we hope a lot of stuff. We talked about a lot of stuff. I guess is there. <laughs> Like anything that you I, still I, like still I, carry with I, I you that's special? I don't know. I'll, I'll tell this one. You know, one, one day um, I was playing the, the guitar, and Tony came in with a guitar, and he opened up the guitar. He was getting ready to go home because he went home about 6, 7 o'clock. So he, he opened up the case and opened it up, and the guitar it was like, uh, he opened up the guitar, so I was like, I'm like, wow. I was like, what is that guitar? He said, this is the guitar I used on Iron Man. And it, it wasn't a Gibson. Everybody thinks it's a Gibson. It's an Ego or something like that. And he, he said, I'm going to leave this guitar for you to play. I'm like, because I'm left-handed. So he left the guitar there for me to play. And I stayed up like like six, seven, eight hours playing Iron Man and looking at myself in the mirror saying, to myself, I am playing on the guitar that Tony Iommi used on Iron Man. Wow. That's, that, that's the greatest thing. Thing ever. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be one of your, your most special memories, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and, and being left-handed, like, you got to play it, you know what I mean? Sure. I really, I really got to play the guitar, so, you know, that, that line is so classic, you know, I got to play on that guitar, so I always thank Tony for that. I love it. Well, Ernie, again, I, I, can't, I, I can't thank you enough for coming back on the podcast. I'm glad to hear that you're, you're doing well. Carnivore rocks. Uh, I can't wait until you guys get back on the road. Just stay safe and, you know, wash your hands. I'll, I'll see you too. And also, wash below your nose also. Because, uh, you know, when you come in, wash your hands, wash below your nose, keep it clean. Yeah. Well, yeah, I got to keep you know, my, my beard clean. You now I got... I, I used to, I used to, uh, that's what the old jazz guys used to say to young musicians when they were talking about coke. They would say, hey, kid, keep your nose clean. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, kid, keep your nose clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Awesome. All right, my man. Well, we'll All right, my man. we will talk soon. You take care. We will. Thank you. You, you too. I'll talk to you soon. You got it. Bye bye. Right. So, thanks again for joining another edition of, uh, I guess, uh, welcome to our Feel My Quarantine, whatever the sub series of Appetite for Distortion is, as we broadcast live, 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 live from my apartment. You like my, this is um, the first uh, concert shirt that I got when I when my first Guns N' Roses show that I'm showing because uh, I'm going to post this of course on a, my uh, platforms iHeart, Spreaker, uh, this 
all of this later if you're watching now or if you're watching the replay later this will be on the podcast so if you happen to not be watching and just listening on the podcast uh, right now i'm wearing the 2002 uh, chinese democracy world tour long sleeve t-shirt which has dragon guys on the sleeves and which way do i have to turn to show you the back yeah, 2002 i was there wish i had it autographed by buckethead but i do not uh, and I think over to my right, I got that on Amazon. It's like a really cool painting of Slash's hands over a guitar. I got to get that that framed. And some one of these days, I'm going to do something with my Chinese Democracy vinyl, hang that up somewhere. But uh, if you're just listening to this on a podcast, I encourage you to watch it on, on Facebook Live. I, I usually give you a heads up or enough of a heads up beforehand to, to join and ask questions. And I appreciate those of you who submitted questions uh, to Ernie. Cause you guys seem to be liking it you know i obviously have a certain standard of of sound quality but you know these are a, a weird times this is you know they're, they're doing the tonight show from their laptop i think i can do appetite for the, for the distortion for my laptop i don't think it's that serious so as long as you guys are enjoying it i'm going to keep doing it even when things get back to normal maybe i'll make this part of the the regular thing you know sometimes just do an episode from home and, and live shows from home all right, so <clears throat> I would uh, probably edit that out of the podcast, but it's live, so I'll keep it in. Anyway, so uh, that does it. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll announce this guest for you guys that are watching live since you're so. Um, I did it on social media. I announced it. Where's my email for it? Kathy Valentine from the Go-Go's. How cool is that? Let me see it. I can't bring it up right now. Uh, yeah, but Kathy Valentine from the Go-Go's. She's coming out with a memoir, so I'm going to be speaking to her next week. And I'll probably do a live for that. It's going to be one of those shorter interviews that you may or may not have heard me talk about. So probably, I think maybe 10 minutes. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that next, uh, next April 1st, whenever that's Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, you know, what you, you want there to be Guns N' Roses news. We'll see. We hope that we, they hop on that, that same train that Dave Matthews and Metallica and all these other bands are doing and offering live performances i will say it's cool the duff is doing uh radio shows for sirius xm that's cool uh duff also did an instagram live interview with one of the dudes from awol nation so he's keeping busy slash i know is doing some interviews but we all want music well at least we got a new body count to listen to for now uh anyway oh and i should mention this uh speaking of new music uh, our friends at the show uh hookers and blow the band, not actual ladies of the night and uh, keeping your nose clean. Huh, I tied everything together like an actual professional. Um, so Hookers and Blow, well, last time they came on, Alex Grossi and Dizzy Reed both came on the podcast and we heard a small clip of their cover of uh, Eddie Money's Shaken. And now the whole thing is available via Golden Robot Records. So check that out. Uh, they, Dizzy has a really good voice for that song. So if you haven't heard uh, Dizzy Reed and Hookers and Blow uh, do Eddie Money's Shaken, you can listen to that right after you listen to this podcast. <laughs> anyway, so that does it. Uh, I will see you guys soon. When will you see the next episode? When will you hear it? Well, in the words of Axel Rhodes concerning Chinese democracy, I don't know if soon is the word, Chinese democracy. I don't know if soon is the word, but you'll see it. <laughs>